black and white. That iconic thing that can take any crappy photo we take and turn it into an iconic work of art. The thing is, it's not actually that simple. And you have a couple ways to do it. The first way is to come into something like Lightroom or Capture One, and you can either manually do it or you can do like I do and you build presets. In fact, my silver black and white presets, which are now at version five, have been around for over a decade now. And we can go through and browse these different looks and mixes, and you'll see all kinds of videos in Lightroom and Capture One saying, oh, this is the best way, oh, this is the best way. But at the end of the day, converting a raw file black and white, while it works really well, especially now with layers and AI masking in Lightroom, all of these things let you do very good black and white. Is I'll usually come in and I'll start with something from silver, or I will also use my Filmus pack. The question then becomes, why do more? Really good black and white photographers know this, is that when you go into Photoshop and you start layering up, and most of us have Photoshop anyhow, you are always gonna get a better result. That little bit of extra is gonna look great on the wall. In competition, that little bit of extra matters. But how do we actually get extra? Let's come back to Lightroom and you could do this same thing in Capture One or another raw editor. I'm gonna do kind of a Delta 100 look from Filmist. I could then go up here and manually tweak highlights and shadows. I could go down here and I could adjust the way that it interpreted the lights and the sliders of each color channel, right? The old school way that we edited black and white in Photoshop was kind of just simplistic. We would go to the channel mixer in Photoshop and convert to monochrome and, and move color channels around to get different looks. It worked fine, and if you knew what you were doing, you could get great results. The other method that came later, Photoshop had a black and white filter, right? So you could go into here and you get more or less these same sliders that you get in Lightroom, which is why I never use it. If I'm just having a basic rudimentary edit, I might as well stay in Lightroom or Capture One and be working on that original raw file and not have to save out copies of files and all that. You will get just as good or better results using Lightroom and a few presets or Capture One and some styles that are well refined than you will by tinkering around in the black and white slider in Photoshop. Don't, don't go that route. So now we come back to Lightroom, but I wanna to go to Photoshop. Now, one way to do it would just be to open this in Photoshop as a black and white, and of course, then we have no color information, and we could then build layers and burn and dodge and things like that. So a few years back, I said, no, I want us to do more in Photoshop to be able to do the, the more advanced black and white. And so that's where I went and I made Black Room. Okay, Black Room is actions, but what Black Room is built on on a foundational level is something you may have seen YouTube videos about using a gradient map to do advanced black and white in Photoshop. So without any actions or anything, let me just show you how that works. Let's say I was in Lightroom or Capture One and I'd done a lot of toning, I'd done curves, right? I'd made the image look good. But before I'm gonna go to Photoshop, I'm gonna restore the color channel. Now I could do this manually, but in the case of Silver, there's actually a mod preset that restores the color. You could also open a color image like this in Photoshop and not edit it at all in Lightroom, but usually I will admit I do start in Lightroom, do my dynamic range edits on the raw file, do a little bit of curves, things like that, and then I'll just do the remove, restore the color information and go to Photoshop. Here we are now in Photoshop. Let me show you what a gradient map is. Here is our color layer, right? We have a color image. I'm just gonna go down to adjustment layers here, and I'm gonna say add a gradient map, all right? Now, what is this weird, ugly mess? It's a gradient map. But look here in the properties. If I double click on this gradient, what is it doing? It's not just putting a gradient, it's a gradient map. It's saying at zero, right? Here's zero, which is black, put this color. It has gray. Let's switch that to pure black, okay? And click okay. Let's click the other swatch on the far end. This is the 255 location or the 100 location, but it represents pure light, pure clipped white, if you're thinking in RGB terms. Let's click this and just select the color white. What have we just done? We've just made a gradient that says anything that's black, put black over it, right? If it's zero. If it's 100 or 255, put white over it. And then everything in between is gonna be a gradient of that. That's why it's called a gradient map. But if we turn it off, it's the color image. If we turn it on, it's just directly converted all of that to black and white, and it's not 
a very good black and white conversion. So why use this? The beauty of this method is instead of having to use like a black and white filter, right? You put on a black and white filter, and then if you need to merge a layer, you need to add something on top that's like a pixel level edit. Now you've already converted it to black and white. You've lost your color information. What a gradient map does is it lets you come in here and say, okay, this is cool. Now anything I do to this is gonna be converted. So if I make a copy of this layer, and then I go up here to image adjustments, hue and saturation. If I go to something like hue and saturation, you can see that if I turn up the saturation, it changes how things are converted. The same with the hue. I can change a lot in this image by changing what's underneath the gradient map. It's still converting it to black and white, but it's mixing up colors and details and things like that. Here's where the beauty comes in. When I created black room, I said, okay, a gradient map gives us the ability to edit all of these layers and tools, right? But I started thinking in the same way I did when I created Loomis for easier zone-based luminosity masking. Instead of having to build it every time and a bunch of complex, complex shortcuts and options, I'm just gonna build an action system that allows us to quickly see all the tones in an image and select those and edit those. And that ended up being Loomis. When I went to Black Room, I said, okay, let's do something different. We're gonna edit quickly two images today. We're gonna edit this image, and we're also gonna edit this portrait here. So we kind of pick up both sides of the photography spectrum. All I'm gonna do to Black Room is this is an action pack up here. So I've installed these actions, and if I'm not in button mode, you see there's all these different actions, which are scripts that run a whole bunch of different things. I'm gonna switch here to button mode because they're all color-coded because I'm organized that way and I made them right so that they're easy to use. The beauty of well-made actions is it builds you all these layers in a vertical way. I've talked about vertical editing in Photoshop for a long time, and I'll show you what I mean. If I click the Start tool in Blackroom, you can see we have nothing right now, just the color image that we brought in. I'm gonna click Blackroom Master Tool. This is what you always start with when you're using Blackroom, and it builds all this in just a couple seconds, right? They're all color labeled, they're all organized. All this stuff, but ultimately at the very top, we see our main tone map, okay? What happens if I turn it off? We have a color image. There we go. That's converting it to black and white. Everything in this group is the all effects master. This is what changes how that black and white is interpreted. Right now, it's a fairly basic conversion, but you can see things like this, where I can say, hey, change the mix intensity by increasing the color underneath, and this changes the black and white with just a click of that slider, and you didn't have to build that layer, you don't have to name it, you don't have to do any of that. But today I just finished the 1.2 update for Black Room, and I went in and did more refinements like I always do in all my free product updates. If you already have Black Room, yes, this is a free update. If not, I'll put a link in below and you can check it out. What does all this mean in practice when we're editing? And I'm gonna show you real quickly not only how to edit this way using these layers, but also some of the new things and the refinements that I've put into the latest version of Blackroom. By building all this in place, all these actions will now work absolutely seamlessly. So what you see here is we have Blackroom. I can look at the zones in my image. This is actually the map from Loomis. In Loomis, we can select and edit these individual zones. So these two packs work great together, but built into Blackroom is the ability just to reference this and see your zones, but also if you're using Loomis, you can use it seamlessly as you're doing this. For purposes of this, the zones just let me see all of my tonal values. And so I can say, mm, this is pretty bright. I'm clipping almost into zone 10 here, etc." You see these various actions. And at the top of Black Room is what we call foundry mixes. What is a foundry mix? A foundry mix is taking all these other five categories of actions that do things like add a yellow 12 simulation filter, that add curves, that make adjustments to that gradient map that I will show you in just a second. Base mods like dynamic range, transparent mod plates like sharpening, edge blurring, emulsions, grains, etc. And those all have their place in this layer stack. And what happens when we run Blackroom actions is it automatically puts them in there for you. And then you still have total control. You can turn the opacity up and down of those layers. You can turn those layers on and off. You can add another one, you can delete one, but you're doing it all within this very organized, structured vertical editing process that at the end is all automatically converted to black and white by the tonal map. 
I've done various updates throughout. We have the new matte paper plate. We have quite a few updates to the magic contrast curves. And there's a brand new foundry mix called darkroom print. Let me show you what these foundry mixes are. If you go to this mode here, the actions kind of look like text, right? And you can select one, and then you can go down here and press play. What these foundry mixes are, is it is automatically saying, okay, build this combination of these 10 different actions within Blackroom and stack them and organize them. And it's basically pre-built effects. And you can then continue on from there. Here's the Blackroom base. If I go here, let's switch back to button mode right at the top. So we have our nice color coded actions. We've run the Blackroom base. I'm gonna go here and run Earth Porn. This is a foundry mix. So you see it pause for a second because it's running like 10 different actions. And all of a sudden you see all these different layers appear. Every one of these layers is set where I think it worked good to be the most practical for this effect. But you can take any of these layers and adjust opacity. You can turn them up and down. What Blackroom just did is it just built all of these layers, put them in place, organized them, named them exactly where they belong in the right order. So I didn't have to spend 20 minutes figuring out, hey, what combination do I want? The problem with Photoshop is if you don't have a system like this, you'll never actually get that complicated because you don't want to spend that much time on every photo. The problem with plugins that you might use within Photoshop or Lightroom is they let you apply a great effect, but you don't have the control because the output is basically just a layer. By using all these native Photoshop tools, we're using 100% of the power of Photoshop, but we're making it as easy, easier in fact, than clicking a plugin because we don't even have to wait for a plugin to load. Hey, it looks good, but I want more dynamic range. So I could go down here to base mod beauty. And what's this gonna do? It's gonna change the base mods right here, which is basically the first layer in the conversion process. If I click HDR base mod, you can see it added a little more dynamic range. I could click HDR base mod again, and it adds even more dynamic range. And you see, if I turn this on or off, I'm bringing more dynamic range in. I could come here and say, let's add another curve to it. So I could add the drop light curve to give it a little bit more of a dark moodiness, right? And you can see it just added another curve right here in this all effects master group. What's the greatness about having all of this together like this? Well, not only can I edit each of these layers individually, but because they're being placed in a very organized fashion within all these groups, it's doing the heavy lifting for me in Photoshop. So I could go up here, for example, and say, hey, I wanna change the opacity intensity of the all effects layer to 75, to 50, back to 100. And it's just adjusting all of these layers for me with just a single click. All that color information is being retained is the tone map is converting everything to black and white, but all our edits are still non-destructive. The beauty is that that tone map, you can make changes to it as well, but you don't have to manually do that. You don't even really have to know what all that tone map is doing. I can go to the tone map tools and this is gonna convert that gradient map. Here's the standard one, which is a full dynamic range. Watch what happens when we click some of these other ones though. This is compressing the dynamic range a little bit from zone one to nine. If we actually turn on the zone map, you can see that it's not letting those tones go past zone nine and it's pushing even those darks up into zone one just by the way that that map is interpreted. But there's different ways to interpret that map, again, non-destructive. Here's a more compressed map. Here is a high key map that pushes things and highlights brighter. Not a great idea for this. Here's a lower key map that makes everything kind of darker without losing the dynamic range. Here's a map, brand new one, that's a darkroom print inspired map that's thinking of the density and the beauty and kind of the dimension of how darkroom prints come out and simulating that. If this is seeming a little complicated, you Blackroom users do not have to overthink all this. The beauty of what I'm showing you is gradient map black and white editing in Photoshop is really powerful, but it's not really powerful because the gradient map does a way better conversion. It's because it gives us the control of infinitely adding layers below it. Blackroom makes that infinite adding of layers as easy as clicking and adjusting those layers to our desires to complete our visualization. So if I take a layer like Dream Plate and turn it up, you can see I'm getting a little bit more of a soft ethereal feel. Here's a portrait that I edited in Lightroom 
And then I brought it with the color information. I believe I actually edited this in Filmus and then said, no, let's do a black and white in black room, brought it over with the color information. Let's run the black room base tool, which is gonna give us a basic conversion. And I'm gonna show you the brand new light foundry mix that works on everything, portrait and landscape alike. And I really love this dark room print. What this is gonna do is it's giving us a mix of all these different actions to build our layers. Here's the basic black and white conversion that Blackroom did, and here's the effects we added. Now you might look at this and say, okay, that's not that much different, but the difference is a lot. Look at the way it handles the flesh tones. What mix did we use? Remember these orange yellowish light foundry mixes are taking a bunch of these actions down below and just simplifying them into one click. You can still come down and use any of these after that or reset Blackroom back to the base state. Here's where all those main master effects are being placed as these actions run. If I turn this layer on and off, you can see just how much subtlety we've actually got here. With it off, it's a good black and white conversion. There's nothing wrong with this, but this darkroom print managed our tone. It managed grain. It managed the fall off of highlights and smoothness. And it just really gives this feel like, hey, I printed this on a darkroom paper. Now, you may not like this look. You might prefer the art portrait or the clean HDR, or the lo-fi ballad. There's all kinds of mixes you could do, but remember, you can do whatever you want after. If I look at this and say, hey, this is good, but I don't like that much grain, I can just go to the grain layer and turn it down or turn that layer off completely. In just a couple of clicks, we did what would have taken 30 minutes of editing and building in Photoshop. Why? because we're using a gradient matte black and white conversion, but we're adding in the element of having actions, which you could build actions yourself to do this. I've just done the work for you in black room so that it's building all these layers and they're always consistent. Are you noticing a theme here? Good black and white editing in Photoshop tends to be subtle. Where the big change comes is you do one subtle layer and then you build another one and then you build another one. And pretty soon you realize that all of those subtle layers together made a huge edit. It's the same if I'm editing with a retouching kit like Alchemist Actions. It's the same if I'm doing Loomis and I'm carefully selecting a zone in Loomis and then selecting another one, putting a curve here, an edit there, a burn there. It's the little details in Photoshop that separate the men from the boys and the girls from the women in terms of editing amazing atmospheric black and white. And we did that all with layers in Photoshop and then converting everything with a gradient map. That's the basics of how I do this. And also the latest update, updates the curves, the new darkroom print combo action, as well as new plates like the map paper, all these little details that just help make Blackroom better and make this whole process easier. So if you are a Blackroom user, make sure you update, just delete the old and install the new. And if you're not, I will put a link in the comments where you can check out Blackroom. And you could also make your own variants of this yourself if you're into making your own actions and do the same kind of thing using the gradient map method. Hope you guys found this useful and we will see you useful, useful, and we will see you on the next one. Peace out.